He was born today to die for us. And you know, when we realize how we've disregarded such a great, great loving God, how we've been indifferent to his sacrifice for us, for dying on the cross, when we realize that we've been breaking God's heart, you know, we repent of our sins and we make a commitment, commitment to love him, to obey him, to abide in him, and to walk with him and have him live in us. And when we make this commitment, we demonstrate this commitment by being baptized. That's what we've been talking about for the last two weeks. Now, all of you who are participating in today's youth service uh, belong to one of two categories, okay? The first are those first, whoa. The first are those who made the commitment. And the second uh, are those who have not. For those who have not, I pray that you continue discovering God. If you haven't made that commitment to God, but you know about God's love, I pray that you would continue, continue discovering God. What a good, good father he is and how he loves you so much and would rather sooner than later make a commitment to him to walk with them and to love him. For those who have made the commitment, who have made a vow to be with him, now what? You made that commitment, now what do you do? Thank you. Okay. So, thank you. So what do you do now? What happens to you after you make the commitment and now you're baptized? How are you supposed to live now? How is my life today different from yesterday? How is my tomorrow going to be changed than myself today? We will read the scripture today. Everyone turn to Galatians chapter 2. Whether it's your physical Bible or your Bible app. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to be reading from the uh, ESV. English Standard Version. You could read from any version. It's all great. It's all God's Word. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Okay, here we go. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, it's, it's a, one verse, so let, let's read it again, okay? Let's read it slowly. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, in this body. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Today's scripture starts, I have been crucified with, cross, with Christ. As we already learned, being totally immersed into the water when we are baptized symbolizes you dying to yourself and being buried to yourself. And when you come out, you are resurrected you. Now, if you have not buried yourself, if you are refusing to crucify yourself, if you are refusing to step down from being the king and the master of your life to do whatever you want, you know, you are not born again yet. You cannot be born again because you haven't died to yourself yet. If you are wondering why you don't see any changes in your life, if you're wondering why you're not being transformed more and more like Christ every single day, maybe it's because you haven't fully committed to Christ yet. 
When we accept Christ and commit to him, we start being transformed. We start changing. Why? Because Christ lives in me now, like we read today in the scripture. When Christ lives in me, there has to be changes in my life. My life has to transform. When we accept Christ, it is Christ who lives in me, who is enabling me to live the kind of life that we couldn't live before Christ because we didn't have the power to. It is the Christ who lives in me, who is enabling me to be happy and fulfilled in Christ. Before, Christ was somebody who saved me, but I wasn't joyful, happy with Christ. I was joyful in the things of the world, but now since Christ is in me, I am happy and fulfilled with Christ alone. It is the Christ who lives in me, who transforms me over time, little by little, every single day, so that we can love God more and actually sin less. It is the Christ who lives in me, who changes who we are. In understanding that the phrase, I no longer live, but Christ who lives in me, we must avoid two extremes of understanding. One is this. The first extreme to avoid is we still have sin nature. Some people think, hey, I am born again. I don't have any sin nature. That's not true. We still have our sin nature because we still have a physical body. We still live in a physical life. You know, I can't transport from here to there, right? I can't just go from here to Korea in like a second. I can't transport myself. But you know, remember in the Bible, Jesus Christ was here and he was gone. Because he was in a resurrected state. When we are resurrected with Christ, we will have that kind of a body. And we will not have sin nature anymore. But we are still in the body. We still have a physical body. So there's limitations on what we can do. And one of that limitation is we still have a sin nature. There's still a tendency to do what I want to do. To try to make myself the king. To do the things that pleases me more than what pleases God. That still exists, okay? Our nature, our tendency don't go away. But what does change is that we now have Christ living in us so that we can overcome our sin nature. We have the power to not follow our sin nature anymore. Sin nature does not enslave me anymore. I have the power. I have the freedom now because who's with me? Christ is with me. Christ enables me. Christ empowers me so I can rule over my sin nature. Second extreme to avoid is to think that, hey, I'm saved and my sins are washed away. I can sin all I want and still be forgiven. I have a license to sin. This is another extreme we must, we must avoid. If Christ truly lives in me, we should be transformed more and more each day to resemble him because he lives in me. You know, I want to share a story about a recovering alcoholic. There was a young man who became an alcoholic in a very early age. He started to drink when he was in high school. And by the time he was in college, he was fully an alcoholic. And his friends and family were so, so worried about it. And one day, the young man said, you know what? I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm not going to be an alcoholic anymore. So his friends and families were, were so happy. But as time passed, the young man became more and more agitated, irritated, annoyed, disgruntled, unhappy. 
He wasn't drinking anymore, but the bitterness from not doing what he wanted was just making him angry and unpleasant person to be around. It got so bad to a point where his friends and family were saying, you know, I liked him better when he was an alcoholic. You know, there are many Christians who are like this recovering alcoholic. They say that they want to become a Christian, and they make a commitment to live a different lifestyle. They try to honor their commitment by trying not to sin. But all along, instead of being happy, they become judgmental. They become angry. They become unhappy. And we have an unhappy Christian. Why? Why are they unhappy? Because they're trying to keep themselves from doing what they want to do. You know, I want to do this thing, but I said, no, I cannot do it. I, I, I took a vow. I made a commitment. So there's this struggle in me. I want to do it, but I can't do it. Just so it's just making that person angry and unpleasant to be around. They are trying to only change their action without changing their heart. Christianity is not about your action. It is about your relationship. Because you love your parents, you want to make them happy. So when you try to not do the things that, that they don't want you to do, you shouldn't be angry about it. You shouldn't be frustrated about it. Because it's making them happy. It's pleasing them. So pleasing them should please you. Same thing with God. The commitment is not to an action, but to your heart, to a relationship with Jesus Christ. To please Him, to love Him, and invite Him into your life, and then you're committing to Him so you can live in harmony with God. You know, as we close, you know, we're approaching Christmas. It's next week. Let's think about what Christmas really means. Okay? Why are we celebrating Christmas? Why did God, God come down to earth and was born on Christmas Day? Like I said, He came to die. You know, what were you born for when you were born? Can you imagine now being 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 year old and think, you know, I was born to die? Well, that's exactly why Christ came. He came to die. Why? So that we can live. He came to die for us. He came to wash away all our sins. Why? Not for the sake of just washing away the sins. No, He came to wash away all of our sins so He could live with us. He could live in us so that we could live together. So God could be my Father in spirit. So, as we celebrate Christmas, let's read today's scripture one more time. I have been crucified with, with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I invite all of you to no longer live for yourself. Can you repeat after me? I want to... I want to no longer live for myself. Thank you. <laughs> no longer live to do what we want to do. No longer live for comfort and enjoyment and fun. No longer live to just please me. But to live with Christ, live for Christ. As we close up our worship of God today as we approach Christmas I want you all to think about the real meaning of Christmas and I want you to 
tell yourself, I don't want to live for myself anymore. I want to live for God. I don't want to live for myself. I want to live for Jesus Christ. I don't want to do what I want to do. I want to do what He wants me to do. I want you to have that mind. I want you to really live with Christ every single day. Why? So you 